Good morning, everybody. It's Meet Me at the Sew Machine Monday. Meet Me at the Sew Machine Monday. I never said that before. That's kind of almost right off your tongue, doesn't it? Meet Me at the Sew Machine Monday. Here at Always in Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana. Man, you have to go around the corn rows to get here. The bridge on 32 has been closed for months. So I saw a worker <laughs> and I pulled him over. And I said, now, mister, this is not even on NDOT. When are you going to be done with this job? Oh, I don't know. I suppose it'll be a four months job. Okay, well, get her done. Get her done. I'm looking forward to getting to work on time. Not having to go all the way around the county to get there. So, oh, complaining already? The first thing, Dawn? Quit it. Quit it. Just get on with sewing at the, meet me at the sew machine. Monday. <laughs> What in the world is in my tea today? I don't know, but I'm all pumped up about these blocks. This is block 25 checkerboard, and block 26 is the windmill. Isn't that cute? I really liked making that block. And Love I, it. And it didn't go together the way I thought it was going to. Love it. You'll have to see the little trick that we play there. But this, what was fun about this, I didn't cut one place one iota of fabric for this. It was right there. Remember that little box of one and a half inch squares I save? It all came from there. Every single one of them didn't have to do anything, but sew them together. So pays to save, pays to save. These are Cappy's blocks. Now she did a fun thing where she made these the same and these the same. I think that's how it looks in the book. Oh yeah, here it is. They used all red in the book, but two shades of red, two values of red. And then here's her windmill. So kind of fun how she uses that turquoise and pink. She's alternating her backgrounds, pink and turquoise. Those are her colors and it matches all of her fun stuff that she uh, gets to fussy cut. Not much fussy cutting in my fabrics because all my prints are really tiny prints. But this is the Kim deal. This is the Tula Pink and plus. I think she's using other things besides Tula Pink, but anything fun that goes with it. That's what she's using. I don't know where Peter's blocks are. I think they're over on his desk. They're on my desk. So uh, we're going to show you how to see Peter's blocks. Uh, in the next video. We're going to do another YouTube video today, so look for that, okay? Alrighty, so let's, I've already got all my components cut out. Let's go over to the sew machine. So us some blocks. Come on over, Peter. Did you get to sew any this weekend? I haven't been sewing for months. I don't like to hear now, that. Now, I did work on my cross stitch, though. I oh, cross stitch. Yep, this, at 6:30 this morning, went out on the porch and did some cross stitch. Well, I got my so we I got my Christmas sampler I'm working on. Okay. Excellent. Well, you know I got to get all my lights turned on. I'd like to be able to see. Got my iron on, got all my, you know, I got to take your my shoes, shoes off. Got to get shoes my on. shoes off. Take your shoes off. I'm in a good mood today. Even though I had a hard weekend, Dad has gone into the next stages of his Alzheimer's where he's getting a little mean. So he almost punched my brother this weekend and it really made me sad. Did you punch him back? No, he did not. We did not punch him oh. back. Now stop that. That wasn't nice. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Here are our blocks that we're going to make. We're going to concentrate on. Now, in my little uh, collection of things that I save, I found these. Look at this. Well, I'm halfway there on that. I don't know why I ended up with so many of those, but I did. So I'm going to sew those together in the four patch. That green's beautiful. It's going to go that way. I'm going to sew those together in a four patch. I think they go over here, actually. And then... That green and gray looks nice. Isn't that nice? Okay, so i got a block up there that has that green and gray in it. 
Then I thought I'm gonna have to jazz it up since I already have a block using this green and gray together. I need to punch it up a little bit. So I'm gonna use this as my blocks that go through the middle. Won't that be yummy? Mm -hmm. I call that cayenne color because it looks like cayenne pepper to me. So I'm gonna show you how I end up Instead of just cutting a whole bunch of one and a half inch squares, like she says to in the book, and I did, I already had these cut, so that was a no brainer to go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna make a strip. Now this strip is, I don't know, about eight, nine, 10 inches long, about maybe 10 inches, I think. And I'm just gonna sew it. I could use a leader and ender block, but I'm just gonna go ahead and take one of these and sew it since it's part of this block. And am I gonna pin? Why, yes I am. I'm gonna make sure that those seams go together. Put a little pin there. Make sure that's even. Put that under my sew machine. And so. Now when I get here, I'm gonna take that pin out because I don't wanna run over it. And then, I don't know if you can see this or not, I'm gonna show it one more time because I like to show this every time. This pops away and this is no longer even because I didn't pin it. So I need to make sure that I close that gap up. If I don't pin, I wanna make sure that that stays in place and I can just use, look at that. I don't have my other hand there. I can just use my stiletto to keep that in place. So that was pretty cool. Oh my goodness, it what didn't even sew. What happened? Did I run? No, I've got got bobbin thread. Maybe I need to uh, clean my sewing machine. It just came on threaded. When my sew machine comes unthreaded, and if it just comes unthreaded through the needle, I don't just go ahead and thread the needle. I take it completely out and re-thread the whole thing. Because when it skipped out of the needle, something else it could have slipped out of. So I'm just gonna, it doesn't take but a second to just re-thread my sew machine here. Most all sew machines um, thread alike. When you do thread your sew machine, I'll give you a little hint. Always thread your sew machine with your presser foot up. And the reason that is, is because there's a couple tension discs in here. When the presser foot is up, the tension discs separate. When the foot goes down, they engage. So there's lots of tension on those discs. Well, if there's tension on the disc, the thread it's hard for the thread to get between the discs while they're in tension mode. So by lifting that up, they're separated, the thread can go in there easy, and then when you lower that, they're in between the tension discs and you'll get good tension on your um, stitches. And that's important, don't you think? Very. There we go. I love a good needle threader. Oh, when it works. I pulled it right out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dawn. What in the world? In our sewing department, we have a lot of traded in machines that we have amazing specials on. Really? Uh huh. We have at least five or six. Um, we posted a video on our Facebook page, a live video of the machines that we had available. Um, and they're going really fast, wow. but it's, it's a great time to get a really good deal on a machine because it, they're previously loved. So, um, and they've all been serviced and checked through thoroughly. Um, they're just trade-ins where people wanted to upgrade to the next level machine, take their quilting to the next level. So those who are wanting to get started in quilting, it's a good time to get an amazing, amazing deal. Just call our sewing department, ask to speak with somebody in their sewing department and they'll help you with that. We'll get you fixed up for sure. 
Well, it's always nice. I got a new sewing machine at home, so it's always nice to have a new sewing machine. There's a little bit of learning curve with it. I mean, it's just like breaking in a new car. And sometimes these machines cost as much as a car. So. <laughs> We have one out there that, yeah. Costs uh, as much as a house. Yeah. A bit ridiculous. Now I'm going to sew this strip again because, of course, I should have made sure it was sewn. Yes, it is. Now how come I didn't pin this? Well, because... I'm not matching any seams. I'm just making sure those edges stay uh, together. But of course, I'm going to pin this again. This is Monday. <laughs> if it's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong. You know, I look forward to these Mondays, though. This is the highlight of my Monday, is getting to do these videos, being with you guys, sewing on the sewing machine, making the schoolgirl sampler blocks. They're so gratifying. Love it. Okay, now again, I'm going to make sure. Now, this time it didn't split open, but I'm going to make sure it stays together. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. All right. Now I'm going to open this up. Press the seam open. You can see the piece is longer than my uh, clapper. No problem. I have a big clapper at home, but it stays by my uh, iron, my big iron, for when I'm doing borders and such. I do a lot of little sewing, you know. I don't, I, I don't do a lot of big sewing except for when I'm doing commission work, which you know I do all the time. But for me personally, I like to do the little things. I'm going to clip this. A little thread, put it in my trash bucket. So now I've got that. If there's a little thread caught, I'm gonna take that out. I'm gonna get my happy little cutter here that I just keep on my sewing machine. I could fold that in half. I think I will because I need to cut. I, think I need to cut four of these. Yes, I do need to cut four of these and I'm going to cut them just like what it says in the book <laughs> only in the book it wanted you to cut squares I just cut strips and now I'm going to sub cut the strips the same size that they said to cut the blocks but now they're all sewn together already See how that works now I have two of those when you're measuring for how long you want your strips over measure I mean make them a, just you know a tad bit bigger than you actually need them just simply because if you should cut a little crooked you want to straighten your edge like if I was doing 10 or 12 cuts off of this I'd be wanting to straighten my edge a little bit each time I uh, made a cut or so. I don't know why it doesn't stay straight, but even cutting this now, it's not stayed straight. So I'm going to show you here in a minute what I'm talking about. Ah! Made my own turntable. Okay. Now you would have thought that that would have been straight because that was straight. Looks like there's a hump on where the seams it was are. Just, yeah, it was just a little bit off. This this end's a little bit wider than that end. See that? So I, I straightened that up. So that's why you cut it just a little bit longer. Now, if you don't feel brave enough to fold it in half, just go ahead and uh, um, cut four, make four cuts, and then you won't have that trouble of it moving, I think is what it does on me. But see this, I can just cut one single layer at a time. And then this cut line does stay straight. And then I just end up with this little bitty bit of leftovers. But see, now I have a four patch, an extra one, that I can use in something else. Ooh, 
Ooh, I love it when you get a bonus something. A bonus. I love a bonus. So let's go ahead and sew these together. And of course, I'm making sure I have opposite colors. It wouldn't do us any good to do that. No, because we could have taken a solid piece and got that look. We want to make sure that we get a four patch looking thing. I'm going to pin, making sure my seams line up. Now, some people like to pin and sew, pin and sew. And some people like to do all their pinning at once and then all their sewing at once. I tend to like to pin all at once and then sew. You know, just depends on the day, I guess. But today I'm going to pin and then I'm going to sew. Pin and sew. It's sort of like pin and teller. Do you know pin and teller? Do you know their work? Oh, I've there I've heard of Canadians. I've heard of them, but I, I haven't seen I haven't seen their work. The one guy doesn't talk. The little short guy. Uh huh. The tall guy. Now he does all the talking. And uh, they're magicians. So are you the pin or the teller? Uh, well, you know, I'm doing the talking, so I'm going to be the talking one, whichever one he is. So am I the short one? I don't know. No, you can't be the, you can't be either one of them. Because you don't talk, but you're the you're the tall one. So the short one's the one that doesn't do the talking in the act. So. I, I identify as a short person. Do you? Okay, uh -huh. well, then go for that. That's good. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to sew these together. And um, do you identify as a tall person? I do not. I embrace my shortness. Uh, if I were taller, I'd be skinnier. Let's see, that's how that works, isn't it? If I think you, so. If you agree that makes with me, sense. let me know on that. Give me I don't a thumbs know. Thumbs up or whatever. Yeah, I think uh, if I were taller, I'd be skinnier. Everybody in my family pretty much is short. My grandpa was short. Now my mom wasn't a short woman. She was, she may be about two inches taller than me. She wasn't what I, but I think she would just be considered average. Mom's just average. Okay, so I've made me some four patches. Oh, isn't this fun? I just love a four patch. It's so simple. It's so refined. You get good contrast and you just got a lovely block. You can make a lot of different uh, quilts with a four patch. You can use them as an alternate block. That's kind of fun. Okay, this is going to be their... This is the wrong way right here. That's gonna be there and that's gonna be there. Look at that. So that's gonna go down the middle. And look at how this is gonna go. This is gonna go like that. Oh, so pretty. Now the other one's under the sew machine. So we've gotta do something to the next block. I'm gonna lay the next block out. Got a D segment there. And then you got a square. And you got a D segment there. And you got a square. And then you got a D segment here. And a square. And a D segment here. And a square. And then you got a little pinwheel in the middle. So let's make our pinwheel, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take fabric A and fabric B, one of them being my background, one of them being my pinwheel color. See, that's just a little bit darker on the purple. I've just been loving this because I don't have a purple. I have one purple block out of all the blocks we've made. How many blocks have we made? After today, 26. Now, you could draw, you might would want to draw on this side because you can draw a darker line. You might want to draw a line and sew a quarter inch on each side. Now, I already have my little uh, diagrams here. So I'm just gonna put my square 
right on my quarter inch. See my foot here? My foot has a quarter inch notch right there. That's my quarter inch. So I'm gonna put the tip of my block on my quarter inch. And then right here is my seam line. I'm gonna just go right in between that. Now that's a quarter inch away. And then I've got my other one. So I'm gonna do this twice. And then I'm a quarter inch away from the drawn line. Quarter inch away from the drawn line. There we go. <clears throat> now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch on this side of the drawn line, only my line isn't drawn because I've got this little uh, diagram here that shows me how to keep my block, come on, on the diagonal, sewing a quarter inch away from my needle. And I'm using my foot, my foot has lines on it too. And it looks like this. So see how that looks? So let me get my cutter. Let me sew these two together to get this out of my sewing machine so I can show I can cut them both at the same time. Always look at your other block and see what you can do to get the element that you need out of your sewing machine. Use it as a beginner and an ender. Okay, that's split again, so I'm gonna use my, and I mean, it's just split a hair, but you know me, how perfectionism. Oops, better take my pin out before I run over it. Now I can get this piece out. Now, at home, I just take my scissors and cut because this is your seam allowance in here. It doesn't really matter whether it's super accurate. I mean, I can pretty much eyeball that. But if you don't feel good about that, you can take your square up ruler, your triangle square up ruler, and see how it has a quarter inch all the way around. Don't you love that? one ruler that just has lots of purposes. And then you can just cut that with your rotary cutter. Now, these squares were supposed to be a odd increment. And so I bumped them up to the whole increment. And you guys have heard me say that before. When it is an increment that's kind of um, weird, you know, an eighth in the eighth segments, I like to bump it up when I know I can size it down. Sometimes I can't. Sometimes I have to cut it exactly what it says. But this time, look, I can take my wonderful ruler that I love so much, my Quilt in a Day Triangle Square Up Ruler. Now, a lot of people love this ruler, but they misuse it. They don't use it correctly. They open their blocks and then square up. Well, look what happens if you don't open your blocks first. You get to square all the edges in one fell swoop. Swoop, swoop. If I were to open this up, I'd be cutting four sides. I'd have to turn my ruler or turn my um, square. And it'd just be a lot, uh, if you were doing, you know, 2,000 of these, then it, it would be quite uh, time consuming. But you could cut your squaring up time in half just by not pressing them open before you square them up. And this works out so good. That's why I love this ruler so much. This is one of my um, 
very most favorite. Even though it's not a creative grid, it doesn't have to be a creative grid to be a great ruler. Even though I do love me some creative grid, you know that if you've been here, I do love me a creative grid ruler. Now, I don't own all the creative grid rulers because, you know, there are some creative grid rulers that do things that I don't ever intend to do, but by golly, if I ever did need to do something that they did and I didn't have the ruler, I'd be looking for one. Yeah. Okay, now to press. I'm going to go back and press open my uh, four patch that I needed to finish up my uh, checkerboard block. <clears throat> there. I'm going to press these. And you can see how my pinwheel is going to come together. Now, when I was at home, I was going to make this block. Well, I did make it. See, it's right here. Oh, and I love my color choices on that. What do you think, Peter? It's my favorite. Look at that background, how it's got the little brown stars and the little gold diamonds. Mm -hmm. I just love that. And I don't have very many brown blocks in my collection. And Dawn. Yeah. The clamshell color yeah, is a lighter it. tone, which yeah, pulls out that lighter yeah, brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love, I it. love it. I do too. That was a, a pretty good uh, light bulb that went off when I put those two colors together. Put all that together. I really liked that. That was yesterday while I was making breakfast for Dad. I was looking through my fabrics and I came across those, so that was kind of fun. Now, when I went to the make this block, I'm gonna set my uh, pinwheels up here. The background goes there, and that goes there, and that goes there, and this goes here and this goes here no here no yeah there so there's my pinwheel so my first instinct peter when i had this laying out was to go ahead and sew this together uh-huh and then i thought to myself well if i do that i'm gonna have to do a set in seam because then i'd sew those together those together these together, these together, somewhere, somehow, right in here is going to have to have a set in seam. And that's where you don't sew all the way and you back it up. And you will do that someday, but not today. Uh, because when I looked at the book, I saw that there was this three patch thing going on where you could sew those together four times. If you did that four times, exactly the same way you would have the elements that you need to make this block. So we're going to start out by sewing these together. Let's do that. So always pay attention to the way the book has you lay it out, but then also check out you know how they segment them out see here they're all separate here they've sewn these two together and then they've sewn them all together so that's what we're going to do it makes it a lot easier than doing a set in seam and someday we'll do a set in seam together or and a y seam there's a couple different those are for another day those are for some prepping. You have to prep a block. Uh, these are supposed to be easy. You know, it, on the front of the book, she says they're easy. And these, so far, you know, the devil's claw was a little devilish, but we, we beat the devil because we had the tools, right? Cappy said that was her favorite block. Really? Hmm, I did not hear that come out of Cappy's mouth. Cappy said she'd make a whole quilt of it. Yeah. <clears throat> Who's being the yeah, devil Yeah, I'm talking now? about the claw. Who's, be Who's being the devil now, right, Cappy? I'm playing devil's advocate. 
and I got through it and I survived, but I didn't pay attention to Dawn's suggestion and I didn't have that handy little tool. I tried to use one from another company with another one and it was wrong. And I brought it in and I went, look, I have just what I need. And she went, uh -uh, it's the wrong one. And she's right, it's the wrong it one. It was the wrong angle. Instead it, of it being this angle, it was this angle. And it, uh, it was a straight edge here, but the angle was down here. And it still had that little thing. And she thought, oh, well, it's got the two little things. It'll work, right? I just line it up. It didn't work. And yeah. so I got it done. And actually, after knowing that now and looking at my points, I'm pretty pleased with myself. I'm, I'm, I don't I'm, I'm, it at all. I'm telling you, I don't know how she did it. I don't know either. Uh, because... Totally, the angles were wrong. So she really, I, she really worked hard at that. So way. yeah. So so she hates the block. I hate much. the block basically, and I I, hate, I don't want to shame a block or any quilting thing, but I'm shaming that one. I hated it. I'm never doing it again. Oh, but if she bought that tool, if she bucks, bought that tool, she'd take. be in low with it. I, I'm not sure. I can use buy your, that tool. Use your having, discount. I know, but I'm not sure if I buy that tool. I won't like twitch every time I use it from uh, the trauma. Uh, of from the that. trauma. <laughs> but. <laughs> I learned, it's, I told Peter, it's like multiplication tables. You mm -hmm. need to learn them, but you don't ever want to use them. Right. You want to get out that calculator. Oh, if you're a quilter, though, you've got to use multiplication tables. Well. Oh, but you're saying get out the calculator. Yeah. You don't want to do it in your head. Yeah, my math teacher said, oh, you'll have, you have to memorize your Your math teacher wouldn't let you take your, uh, use your calculator no. in school? No, oh, no, we had to memorize them. And she, her rule was, she said, now, you must memorize it because you won't ever have a calculator with you everywhere you go. You now, do now. You do now. She Dana, was I mean, wrong. Sorry, Mrs. Chandler. <laughs> sorry, Mrs. Chandler. We have Broke a phone. Through. We have a phone, and I pull my calculator out all the time. So that's the devil's claw. I got yeah. the information, but I'll probably never use it. It's okay. like multiplication tables. So. Okay. When we're at retreat and you need that angle, you just call me. I I'll will. Have, I'll, I'll have a triangle with me. I'll bring the blocks and go cut them, Dawn. Yeah, yeah, and right. And I will sew them together. I'll say, here, I'll watch you cut them, Kathy. Yeah. Oh, no, okay. Well, How's Kathy going to learn if she lets somebody else cut her blocks for her? Well, sometimes. That's why you have friends, you see. You have good friends who can do those things. Good like. friends that want you to learn <laughs> instead of doing it for you. Okay, let's put this back together. Uh, the things go on top. Yeah, like that. Like that. Like that. And like that. We bring these over and we'll sew these together. Now. This was fun because I didn't pin. What? You didn't pin? What are you thinking? The reason I didn't pin is because I'm going to put my seam on the top. There's no seams on this piece here. So nothing to worry about there. Nothing for my feed dogs to uh, pop out of shape. And I can sew with my seam on the top. And I can watch whether my seam is getting flipped over or not. I have full control, and you know how I love control, um, full control over how that seam is acting. And, of course, have your stiletto handy in case it should flip or flop. You don't want to have a flippity-floppity block. That's for Easter. Flippity floppity Easter's on its way. Oh, I think that's hippity hoppity. Oh, well, make it up as you go, Dawn. Make it up. No news on the uh, Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial. They did, the judge made the final judgment. And we don't know if anybody's going to appeal or not. So, um,. It's kind of uh, over for a while, which I'm I'm just thankful that they can get on with their lives, hopefully, and you know have a better better time. Okay, now look, I'm all the way. I need all these pieces out, so it's time for me to get one of my uh, beginner and enders. Monday's going to be 4th of July. I'm not going to be here on Monday. Uh, Peter and I may try and make a video on Friday and upload and set it to upload on Monday. I don't know what we're going to do. Maybe I'll come in Tuesday and we'll do one. I just don't know. We're going to fly by the seat of our pants. Well, we need a holiday, Dawn. 
Yeah, we do need a holiday, but not from these 4-inch squares, do we? Sure. You think? Yeah, it'll give some time for people to catch up and... Ooh, my dad loves ketchup. Pick out their fabrics for the next block. All right. Enjoy some, you know, family and food and cookout and fireworks and okay. sparklers and grandkids. Well, my life is all about sewing. So, you know, to me, a fun time is being behind my sewing machine or behind my rotary cutter or behind my iron. What about behind your punch needle hoop? Uh, not so much. What about behind your cross stitch hoop? <laughs> yeah, I'm loving my cross stitch. No, I don't cross stitch in a hoop. Oh, in hand. Yeah, I do you it all in hand. You cross stitch in hand. Yep, I do. I might get to that level someday. Um, it would be nice because you don't have to mess around with the hoop. You know, you don't have to mess around with your motif looking um, out of square. Because if, if it's not in your frame square, then your motif looks crooked yeah even though you're stitching on your fabric yeah why why do you choose to use a hoop versus in hand i haven't tried it in hand oh. what we're talking about is when you cross stitch whether your fabric is just loosey-goosey or whether you have it tighten taut. it in a hoop okay so now look what we've got now all we have to pay attention to is our d segments and hopefully our our pinwheel will just happen. <laughs> Got our fingers crossed, right? There it is. And there. Look at that. Look at how that happens. And then just like we did here, we're going to sew this together. That's a bit enough. And am I going to pin? Why, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm going to make sure those seams come together. I'm gonna make sure. Those seams come together. We had one of our customers on Saturday who does a, he does, he likes to piece uh, quilt tops. Mm -hmm. And he was looking for an alternative way to have them quilted other than spending money and paying a long armor to quilt it. So he took Stephanie's certification class on our long arm machine. Um, three weeks ago and then the last two Saturdays he's been in quilting quilts. Is that Patrick? Patrick, yep. Patrick's gonna do Emma with us. Hi Patrick. Hi Patrick. Uh, he did, He let me tell you something. He took the class, he quilted um, a small, like a small lap quilt and then the last quilt he quilted he did, on Saturday he actually got two done. He got two lap quilts done during the session and on the I think it was pumpkins and boo or boo and pumpkins. I'm not sure the pattern, but he actually came up with his own motif that he sketched out. And then he did it all over like leaf or vine pattern um, during his rental session on that last quilt. It was, oh, it looked good. Wow. It looked real good. Wow. All from one lesson? He took that certification class and then he just came in really and fast. came in and rented the machine. And of course, you know, there's always somebody here to help during the rental session to yeah. make sure things go smoothly. But right. it was very cool. It's always cool to see people, you know, take their quilting, you know, to the next level. Yeah. And get more involved in it. That's just the part I just have no desire to do, Peter. I love every single well, bit. Dawn, if you did the quilting, then that would take you away from piecing more quilts. Hello, so this, for is you, what I, this is what for I'm you, saying. For you, it makes sense to only do piecing. Exactly. Um, and, you know, everybody's got their different reasons or different things that they like to do or, mm -hmm. or how much they want to be involved in that, that part of their quilt, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. It does not... I me, can't wait for Emma to start, though. That's going to be awesome. That fabric yeah. is beautiful. And we're going to start that on Friday. This Friday, which is Emma July 1st. July 1st is when we start. If you don't already have your kit and you want to sew along with us, 